Uh, the book or the prayer of Jabez is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And the character of Jabez is interesting and worth you taking the time to get to know. Here's what it says about Jabez. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Lord Jesus, be with us on a Friday when we're tired and we're thinking about the weekend. Help us to remember you and that you made the weekend for us. You made it so that we could worship you. Make it so on this weekend. Help us to find our place with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever noticed how names become history? Names can often just crystallize history for us. Let me give you a few examples. Kennedy and Camelot. The years in the White House are, uh, under President Kennedy were known as Camelot. Kennedy and Camelot. How about this one? Elvis and rock and roll. How about Michael Jackson, king of pop? How about the Donald and you're fired? What about Justin Bieber? What does he symbolize? Water bottle dodging teen pop stars, I guess. I have a weird name. My name's Toby Allen Dubose. I never really liked my name much when I was growing up, when I was your age and in school, because I had infinite possibilities for all sorts of mockery of my name. So my friends called me all sorts of things like Tobe, or Toby One, or the Tobes, all right? I was never sure really liked my name. I never really got it. And one day my parents said, do you know who we named you after? We named you after your dad's best friend from high school who died when they were both freshmen in college, and he was the man that led both of your parents to Jesus. Uh, my middle name, Alan, is my father's middle name, and my last name, Dubose, comes from a French name, Dubois, which means from the woods, and it tells the story of how my ancestors came here uh, to seek religious freedom from France in 1685. So when I think about my name, it unites me with history, it tells me who I am, but the most important thing is, it tells me who I'm destined to be. Have you ever noticed that names are reflections of people's character and that their characters and destiny are inseparable? I want you to notice three things about Jabez, his character, his name, and his prayer. His character, his name, and his prayer. The first part, his character. It says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't enjoy reading the parts of the Bible that are so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so, who was the father of so-and-so. You don't know these people. They lived thousands of years ago. And Jabez is in a part of the Bible that's called, you know, like a census report. It's a long list of names. And we don't know much about any of them. And it's a very long list of names. And suddenly, right in the middle of a long list of names, uh, the person writing this, the chronicler, he interrupts himself and he says, hey, wait a minute, I want to tell you about somebody really important. A guy whose name was Jabez. Here's the most important thing for you to know. He was more honorable than his brothers. All these people that I've listed their names, you can forget about them. Let me tell you about the one who's the most important. He was honorable, but not just honorable, more honorable than the rest of his family. The honorable one, Jabez. You might think, well, why don't you tell me what he did first? What he did was not as important as who he was, at least not to the person who wrote this. His name is a reflection of his character, and his character and his destiny were inseparable. When we got ready to name our children, uh, we did it with a lot of, a lot of study. So my wife took a names book, a baby name book, and I took a baby name book, and we went away, and we had something happen to us that it almost never, ever happens to married people, and that is we got back together in a couple of days, and we agreed on what we should name our child, our firstborn son. We both like the name Aiden. It means pleasant, pleasant, and, and we picked the middle name Christopher, which means Christ bearer, one who bears the name of Christ, and so his name is Pleasant. Christ bearer. We did the same thing with my second son, Ethan. Ethan means strong. His middle name is Gabriel, which means devotion to God or to the Lord. So his name means strong devotion to the Lord. And they both are from the woods. So 
Our hope is that they will grow up to live up to their names because their names reflect their characters and their character and their destiny will be inseparable. Do you guys have that new Facebook app, Branch Out? I added that a couple of weeks ago. And you know what I found out? I don't know very much about my ancestors. I mean, I know the names of my grandparents and obviously my parents, but when it gets beyond my grandparents, I know a little bit about my great-grandparents, but I didn't know things like when were they born, in what city were they born, uh, and then beyond that, I don't know. You know, that's what this part of the Bible is about, is about discovering who you belong to. And as I go and I look and I put in the names of my ancestors, even just two or three generations ago, it pulls up all kinds of stuff about them. Like if they were ever arrested, it has it. Uh, it's plugged into a search engine, you know, and I'll find out whether they were honorable or not so honorable in about five seconds. When your ancestors come looking for you, when your grandchildren come looking for you, will they find someone who was more honorable than their brothers? Because your name and your destiny are inseparable.